to beyoungministry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Today we continue in our study of the book of James. We're in chapter 1, verse 4, which reads, Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That's James chapter 1, verse 4. The ultimate expression in any relationship is the love therein. Learning to love God is without question the key to enduring all the trials of life. The believer's love for God is not automatic. As with loving anyone or anything, loving God involves a process. And it is this process that provides decisive evidence of the heart that has been made alive to God. And when we endure trials, we will grow in our appreciation and love for God. True faith, sustained by true love, perseveres in the midst of our trials. Now, the true believer in the Lord is held by the Lord, kept by the Lord. This results in the believer also holding on to the Lord. We persevere in our trust in the Lord as we go through trials. That is to say, when we endure in our faith in the Lord, Through our trials, our faith is proved. Proven faith through the perseverance of our faith through trials gives validity to our love for the Lord. Perseverance is the child of God holding tightly to his love and his faith. Our values determine our evaluations. When we cannot rejoice in our trials, we discover our values are wrong. In the beginning of today's text, we read, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature. If we have a trial-free life, it would be boring and without purpose. For example, a pearl forms when an irritant, such as a wayward food particle, becomes trapped in the mollusk. The animal senses the object and coats it with layers of aragonite and conchylin. These two materials are the same substances the animal uses to build its shell. In most pearls, the mineral aragonite is arranged in sheets of flat six-sided crystals. Between each sheet, the mollusks secretes a very thin layer of the membrane forming protein conculin. This composite material is called nacre or mother of the pearl. The chrysalin structure of nacre reflects light in a unique way, giving so-called nacreous pearls their high luster. The needle-like crystals of aragonite in these pearls are arranged perpendicularly or at an angle to the surface of the pearl. Our verse for today begins with the word let, which is a present active imperative. Essentially, James James is saying, let God do his work. We must be submissive to God through the trial. We must not fight against God by resisting the insight the trial is trying to deliver. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we read, No trial has overtaken you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Through our trials, we are afforded the blessing of experiencing the joy of the Lord. His joy enables us to see the glorious future he has in store for us. His joy is the fuel of our perseverance. And the more we persevere, the more we understand that God is allowing or causing the trial to create a greater perseverance in our faith for a greater usefulness for his glory. In today's verse, James wrote, let perseverance finish its work. 
The word finish here is better translated bring to maturity. When we resist the work God wants to accomplish in our lives, we deny the spiritual maturity he wants to grant us at that time. Embracing God through any trial is most difficult. Now, perseverance is not the goal. Being mature in depending upon God is the goal. Actually, the goal is becoming more mature in our relationship with God, and this happens on the heels of learning to depend upon Him more and more. In Galatians 4.19, we read, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. According to Galatians 4.19, God's ultimate spiritual goal in the life of the believer is that Christ is fully formed in us. His goal is that we become so dependent upon him that he is revealed through our yielded lives. Again, our text for today reads, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. Here, James reveals what he means by maturity. The Greek word translated complete is holokaleros. We get our English word holography from this Greek word. A holography is a 360 degree picture. It's a complete picture. Trials enable us to see God more completely, rendering for us a more complete ability to depend upon and trust Him more. The last phrase of today's verse reads, not lacking anything. At the root of our sin is our lack. It's our lack that gives way to covetousness. I find it most intriguing that the tenth commandment is, Thou shalt not covet. At the root of all of our sin is our lack or our desire for what we don't have. Due to the fact that we lack explains why man looks to other things instead of God for fulfillment. That is, other things or people. And in the end, it all comes down to what we value. Oddly, the only way we consider trials to be great joy is if we want God in all his glory more than we want anything else. And if we want those other things more than we want God, to that degree we will be unable to, co to consider the trial a great joy and fully embrace Him through the trial. And this call to maturity is a call to slavery. Slavery to God. That's why James starts his book with the fact that he's a doulos. He's a bond servant, the lowest of all servants. You see, at the end of it all is God giving himself to us in a way that we truly get him, that we truly see him with our hearts, that we really know him. Let's close with a great quote that sums up the point of our sanctification. You'll remember our sanctification is the process wherein our souls are being changed. And our souls have three parts, our mind, our will, and our emotions. Sanctification is the changing of our souls, the changing of the way we think, the changing of the way we choose, the changing of the way we feel. The goal is the change that God wants to render to our souls, our sanctification. A really good writer by the name of Paul Tripp once said, God will take you where you would not go to produce in you what you could not accomplish. Let me say that one more time. God will take you where you would not go to produce in you what you could not accomplish. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. 
If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.